for choosing to come. Hi, my name is Lisa Garcia and I'm in the San Diego office. I'm really glad that you came to our breakout session today to learn about uh, Power Your Mind. It's a new program that we've just launched and we're really happy that we get to share it and we'll tell you a little bit how it all got started. Okay, so um, Recovery International is under the umbrella of, of uh, I mean, Power Your Mind is under the umbrella of Recovery International. Uh, Dr. Lowe, who was our founder, uh, it's 85 years young. We were the, probably the oldest, um, if not the oldest, uh, mental health organization. We're 85 years young. He was a neuropsychiatrist out of the University of Illinois. And he really is the person that founded uh, cognitive, th cognitive training of what we know as cognitive therapy today. Our groups today are peer led and it's the self-help self model focus focused on trivialities of everyday life. We have meetings via Zoom, in person, in the United States, Canada, and India. Uh, the fun fact that I love to always share is that Dr. Lowe almost lost his license over this model. Next slide, please. So what gets you worked up? Daily trivialities or trivial events. You know, we hear a lot of things like, of situations, people and places, when we'll hear the word stress, our computer isn't working correctly. Traffic is a good thing that can get us worked up. Not a good thing, but it's something that can get us worked up. Road rage, uh, time change. Can you know when things, how many likes we have on Facebook, how many likes we don't have on Facebook. The little things of every day that can get us worked up. I know when our kids come home and they say, I'm so stressed. That's a common word that we hear. And a tool that Dr. Lowe came up with is it's a stressing situation, but it's not dangerous. This program will give you some tools to calm yourself down. What types of daily trivial events work you up? And so this is a, um, not only is Angela and I gonna talk, but we want it to be interactive. So you can raise your hand and we can call on you. So something that gets you worked up that's trivial. You can raise your hand now. There's no wrong answers, I promise you. Nobody wants to share? It's okay. You Angela. can also, yeah, you can also put that in the chat box. Uh, Valerie is, is looking at that. So if there are those little situations that, you know, everyone has their buttons that, that get pushed. Um, mine is, is the weather. Uh, I don't live in a good place for weather. I don't know why I haven't moved after all these years. But when I wake up to a foot of snow on the ground, I get worked up. Um, and mostly because I know I have to walk the dog through that. Certainly it is distressing, but it is not a dangerous situation. I, uh, I guess unless I'm going to go out and drive in it. Um, but just having it is is a, a situation that gets me worked up. Um, and these are trivial. So Valerie, I'm just gonna do a quick check with you. Anyone put anything in the chat box for us? Uh, yes, yeah, so we have uh, Pam Roth says family dynamics. Right, exactly. Thanksgiving's coming up, right? We will probably have some kind of trivial things that happen, you know? Uh, they come late, They uh, somebody's gonna say something at the table that is something that can get us worked up when we ask that we don't talk about things that can get us worked up. And so in our meetings, we don't talk about sex, religion, politics, or legal issues. So we keep it real trivial to the things that are the daily events. Anybody else, Valerie? No, that's, that's the one. Okay, let's go on to the next slide, please. So some of the uh, organizations here in San Diego that we've partnered with or that we have presence with is Community Research Foundation, CRF, Mental Health Systems, Mental Health um, MHS. Uh, I sit on the Suicide Prevention Council, 
Uh, we're very involved with the Access and Crisis Line. They refer us all the time. Uh, the San Diego Coalition of Mental Health, uh, NAMI, of course, the NAT Conference. Uh, Angela um, presented there uh, last couple months ago. We're, we just were at the honor flight. That was really nice with the veterans, but we do a lot of things with the veterans. As we know, uh, the veterans have a lot of symptoms when they come back. Uh, we have a lot of presence in the clubhouses. Uh, SIP program, we have, we've done some, a lot of work with the schools. We've done some stuff with the, uh, uh, the faith, faith uh, organizations. And uh, we've done a lot of things with COM. I sit on their planning committees. And I just did something that if you want to uh, be able to see that I was, they picked four organizations and we were lucky to be with Catherine Garcia. Um, the NBC breakdown series uh, was last May over uh, Cinco de Mayo. If you want to check that out, there's the link there. It was really an honor to be chosen about, about why our program works and gets people well. Next slide. And I'll put that link in the chat box in a little bit later when I'm done sharing slides. Okay. So, um, this is you, right, Angela? Or yeah. me? Yeah. So Go we ahead. have a program that um, we launched for uh, teens and young adults. And again, this is still using the Recovery International method, the same concepts, uh, but we've taken a, a, a youthful approach to it. And we've put it in this graphic novel style. And basically, what we're showing you today is. Um, the contents of this workbook. So this is the book in my hand and um, what it is an independent tool. However, we can also layer on a uh, facilitated workshop for a youth group if, um, if there's anyone that is, is wanting that, which means we can basically take the students through a chapter at a time, uh, make sure they're using it, see if they're understanding it. We have group activities. We could even do this online if we can't be in person. So what I really like about this program, Recovery International Method in general, is it really offers um, life skills, coping skills to control anger, alleviate anxiety, really establish that more calming, peaceful um, workplace or home environment. So our plan for today is we want to get you to learn some lingo in Recovery International. So we're going to talk about the difference between angry and fearful temper. We're going to explore things we can and can't control. And then we're going to um, recognize some ways to navigate the trivialities of life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, we are going to learn one wonderful term, Lisa's favorite term, and this is endorsing. And that's this mental pat on the back uh, for any small effort that you do toward, your be toward better mental health uh, or toward improving your situation. We're gonna discover the four-step method. And then along the way, we're gonna learn all these new kind of cognitive behavioral tools or spots, we call them, to help calm yourself. So one of the things that we have the students start with in the workbook is to look at what other people have said about the program. And there's words and phrases here that might really resonate with, um, with, with you or you know, with the students who are using this book. And so I just want you to take a quick minute to look at this and then, you know, just kind of put in the chat for Valerie a couple of those words and phrases that you think are really important ones and ones that you might yourself or for your child or your student that you're working with might develop into your own goal. You know, at the end of using this workbook after seven chapters of learning this method and practicing what would you want to say about yourself? But for now, if you just kind of pick out a few of those words that resonate, I'm going to have Valerie um, shout those over to us. You know, it takes time to type and read, so, or read and type, really. And we do have, even in a work group setting, we have the students uh, write their own statement. And we're doing that because we want them to have that check-in point 
at the end of this to see, you know, did they move the needle at all? Do they think they're, they're using these tools and, and concepts in a way that's helping them uh, reach their goal? Um, we don't have anyone share those. I mean, this is all, you know, this is all private. And so they're just revisiting this themselves. Valerie, do you have anything for us? Yes, um, we have one from Jesse. He says, trust me. It's one of my favorites. Thank you, Jesse. Anyone else, Valerie? That, that's it. Okay. So yes, I'll Lisa. Share, I'll share one. I have tools to deal with my anxiety today. You know, um, that's one of the greatest gifts that um, recovery has given to me, whether we're using the power of your mind or we're using recovery. But we learned that we have tools and nobody's gonna be judged here if you have a right answer or a wrong answer. So we, it's a participating group effort. So is there anybody that sees anything here that you could say, oh yeah, that could work for me or my family on Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> you know, Thanksgiving's coming, the holidays are coming, you can choose one. We have another one. Chat, and we use humor. So we're going to use some humor because humor is our best friend, Dr. Lowe called it. So, you know, so does anybody see something in there that they'd like to choose? So we have another one, and I hope I pronounce this correctly. Keishil Jafi. Um, it's saying we have a peace. We can get peace. Yeah, that's true. Very good. Thank you for participating. And this um, this program in general just does bring peace because um, and and it's really great for the whole family to use. I want to say that now Recovery International has been traditionally for adults. We have had some youth programs, uh, but it's really best when everyone in the family is using it together. So I just wanted to note that quickly. So let's get into temper. Um, and in the chat box, or, or you can unmute, raise your hand, and I'm happy to call on you. When you think of the word temper, what comes to mind? What are those feelings you might get or experience? What are those emotions? What are even those physical changes that happen in your body when you hear the word temper? So if anyone has, again, I'm happy to just have you unmute and shout them out to us. Like Lisa said, there's no wrong answers here. Mallory? Yes. Um, again, thank you, um, Keishu. I hope I am pronouncing this correctly. If I'm not, I'm sorry. Uh, negative feelings, correlation. Also, should I say them all or do you want to come in between? Well, I think uh, Keishel actually just came online. Do you want to unmute and, and say that yourself and tell us if yeah. we're pronouncing your name right? <laughs> Hi, yes. Um, my name is Cashel. I know it's a Thank you. weird Irish name, <laughs> Sorry. so don't worry. No, totally fine. Um, but when I think about the word temper, it immediately gives me like reprimanding or like in trouble or like someone else has a temper because of actions that like I did, you know, so... I feel like when when I think of temper, I it's like mm, or like immediately feeling like I have to diffuse that emotion from someone else. Um, yeah, that's what I think of. That's what comes to my mind. Thank you, Cashel. Thank you very much, um, Valerie. Anyone else on the chat? Yes, we have two more. Uh, Pam Roth says, "Red face, warm." Yeah, so those physical changes you notice, red face, warm, maybe you're realizing you're clenching your jaw or your fists. Lisa, you had something to add? I'm in trouble. You know, I've done something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, there's not, when, 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 we, when we have the, when we hear the word temper, you know, I did something wrong or somebody else did something wrong. So thanks, Lisa, for that lead in, because that's where we're going next. So we're going to talk about the two different tempers as our program defines them. So there's angry temper, and this is where we feel that someone else did something wrong to us. Um, and some examples here, a friend stands us up, we get cheated out of a deal, someone else gets us in trouble, um, or we get snubbed outright from, from some deal. So this is your angry temper. Someone else did 
something to you. To contrast that, let's go to a different kind of temper and fearful temper. Sometimes we make a decision to do something. Maybe it doesn't meet your expectation. Um, perhaps I was all ready to do this presentation and I have computer problems and you know you can't hear my voice well and my picture is fuzzy and my Comcast internet is going out and I would really get worked up over that. Um, I would start to likely get really red in the face and neck because that's where I get when I'm embarrassed about a situation or when I know I did something wrong. Um, so this is that someone did, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move your faces so I can see this here. Um, I did something wrong. So it's, this one's about me. The other one's external, someone else did it to me, but this is, I did something wrong. And here's a couple of kind of side-by-side -side examples of this. So an angry temper, some of the things you might be thinking or saying, you know, my brother is always getting me in trouble. I hate her for saying I can't take the car to the party. I'm sick of waiting for an answer. She can't decide. He's always running late and ruining my night. On the contrast, there's wow, I did bad on this test. I must be really stupid. I don't get math. There's no point in trying. I'm so embarrassed. I got called out in class. These are the first step and an important step in this program is learning to distinguish between angry and fearful temper. And we know everyone judges a situation. Well, <laughs> excuse me. What we're going to learn is to really identify, but we're going to drop that judgment and learn to replace a insecure negative thought with a secure thought. And those are the tools that we're gonna be giving you today. So our workbook goes through um, six characters and in these comic book style graphics, we're introducing uh, the story of the individual as well as a concept. So I know you can't see this, so I'm gonna make this bigger. And Max has kind of become our poster child for this program. You see Max everywhere. So Max is outside waiting at a movie theater and he's waiting for his friend, Terry, and she's late. And so you can see him thinking here, you know, we're going to miss the start of the movie. I'm really steamed. Um, what are some of the ways just looking in this photo that you can tell that Max is getting worked up? And again, you can unmute or you can just put it in the chat for us. Okay, so Jesse says sweat marks. Good, we see sweat. So he's getting worked up. Lisa, did you have something to contribute? Yeah, he's, he, he's looking at his phone. Yeah, no, she's, uh, and he's probably looking at it because he's not getting information from her. Right. Um, where is she? Or maybe he's looking at the, the time on the phone and realizing the minutes are ticking by and it's getting very close. So let's look at one Max. more. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Annalena Garcia says uh, facial tension. Yeah. And, and in his face, you can kind of see a little bit of a clenched jaw. Yeah. His mouth. Good. Thank you. So Max has had the training and he's now we're going into Max's head. So Max is pretty angry. As his conscience, how can we help him turn his frustrations into something positive? Maybe he doesn't have to blame or accuse anyone or control how he acts or reacts to something that has already happened. This is in the past, right? Um, or let anger keep him from seeing both sides of the story and not taking it personally. So the next panel, Max is just saying, you know what? I don't know why she's late. Maybe she's stuck in traffic or something else is going on outside of her control. So one thing that we learn in recovery is you can always have a plan to do something different. So he's saying, I have to relax. There's a few showings in the next 40 minutes. We can catch them if she's really late. So he's got another plan. So again, you can unmute or you can put this in the chat. Um, tell me in this story, which kind of temper is Max experiencing? Remember, we learned angry, someone else did something, or fearful, I did something. So if you can just chat that over to Valerie or unmute. Okay, um, we have a few. Uh, Jesse Ortiz says, angry temper. 
And Cashel says angry. Angry temper, right. Mm -hmm. So he's blaming his friend, right? Harry is late. She's late. She's, she's um, making our night bad because of this. Uh, we talked about Max's his feelings already, what he was experiencing, why he was getting worked up. So let's go to some of these wonderful spots or tools um, that Max started using while he was there. I, I want to say there's, there's hundreds of um, cognitive behavioral tools in the recovery program. In this book alone, you get about 130 of those. Um, and what we did was we really just group those um, into these categories. So for angry temper, you could use, we excuse rather than accuse ourselves and others. And that is one of the things that Max said, well, maybe I don't have to accuse her. And he did go on to excuse her. And so um, just looking down at this list, can you tell me what Max used or even what he could have used. And I know that write, writing all of these in the um, chat would be a little bit much. So if you just wanna take those dots and say, oh yeah, the fourth one or the fifth one or something like that, that's easy too. Cashel, you unmuted, thank you. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, if we can't change the situation, we can change our attitude towards it. So he, he was like, well, she might be in traffic and like maybe we can, if know we can watch the other showings or whatever so he he likes had a perspective shift excellent thank you very much for that spot anyone else want to offer a number or a, or a spot yes um jesse ortiz says uh, drop the judgment very good yeah dropping the judgment that um she personally did something wrong to him right that there there is something else going on and, and let's just figure out what that is um, Lisa, do you want to offer us a spot? Sure, of course. Um, let me see here. Um, if you can't change the situation, you can change your attitude. You know, we, we always think one way, but it does, we don't know what's going on. So we can change our attitude, you know, about the situation. I have a 13-year-old daughter and a 15 year old son. So you could imagine I use this all the time and I've actually used and, and they have their own favorite spots as well. So my daughter's is people do things that annoy us, usually not to annoy us. Uh, she uses that all the time and it really does help kind of put, put things in perspective for her. Valerie, just a quick check if anything else came through the chat, otherwise we're gonna move on. Yes, we can move on. Okay. All right, so our next lesson, now you know about angry and fearful temper. So here's our next lesson. Let's go ahead and uh, entertain me, if you will. Just go ahead, maybe push your seat back a little bit so you can put your, your arm outstretched all the way in front of you. And I want you to just wiggle the fingertips. And then because I'm in an office spinny chair, I have fun and I go, wee, and I go all the way around, okay? Make that circle for yourself. That's all you can control. That is it. Down to the tips of your fingertips, that is all that is in your ability to control. And uh, teaching this lesson to teens and young adults is really important um, because there's a whole lot outside that circle that we absolutely cannot control. And we start to recognize what those things are in this program. So I'm gonna to go to our next story and this is Terry and Terry is the one that Max is waiting for. So here's her story in her comic panel. She's um, in the blue car there, Arg. And here's Terry, I'm so late. Those drivers are idiots. I shouldn't have taken this road. We have a couple of tempers going on here. Um, you can unmute and tell me what they are. Uh, why, why Terry is experiencing these, or you can put them in the chat. I think she has angry temp or fearful temper at first, I think, because she's like, I'm so late. And that's like a reflection on her action. And then it went to the other temper, uh, angry temper. Yeah. The and then what and did then, like, she, back. 
right back to back, fearful right, right? Yeah. i shouldn't have yeah. taken this road like yeah. this was my huge mistake and and had i not done that i wouldn't be yeah. stuck here so she waffles between uh fearful and angry and then back to fearful thank you for that so we're in terry's mind again she's had this program so Terry has worked up, how can we help her adjust her attitude? She can't change the situation, but she can change her reaction. Comfort is a want, not a need. And this is an average situation. There's no need to stress or fear danger. So she then says, you know, I can't change being in the stupid traffic, but I don't need to stress. I'll be fine. And then of course, remember Terry's totally stuck in traffic. So she's not driving. Um, so she can do this. She can text Max because she's not driving. I'll just text Max. I'm almost there. We can catch a later show. So we have a couple things going on here. But before I continue, uh, I want someone to just tell me in a sentence, very brief, what's the situation that Terry is in? And if someone can do that, Cashel, you want to you wanna participate yeah, here? A real say, brief, quick sentence. Terry is driving to meet her friends for a movie, but she's stuck in traffic, which made her really late. Perfect. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's her situation, right? Very, very brief. This is important because as we get into the fourth step method, the first step is describing the event and keeping all of the, just keeping it to the facts. So this is, exactly what you just did. Describe the situation. Um, so what are some of the things that are out of Terry's control in this situation? And go ahead and put those in the chat if you want, or again, just unmute. And Valerie, if you can tell us what are the things out of Terry's control? So Jesse says that the traffic, of course, Traffic is out of her control. Anything else out of her control? Anyone can identify? Annalena also said traffic. Thank traffic. you. Traffic. Okay. Uh, Sharon. Lisa? Oh. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, okay. Valerie. Thank you. Uh, Sharon says everything except her attitude and responses out of her control. Good. Good. Thank Lisa, you. anything to add? Well, the way she's feeling, she can't control that. <clears throat> they, they, they're just symptoms. They just show up. Good. She also can't control what time the movie was set, you know, when it's going to start, right, compared to where she is. So good. So we've already named both of these here. Um, some of what is in Terry's control, her attitude and how she handles the situation. So some of the tools that you probably noticed that Terry used in her situation to calm herself um, in her conscience, she was already thinking about these are listed here, but there's others listed here that she could have used as well. And a wise woman who happens to be on this Zoom with me once told me, Lisa, <laughs> really, if you closed your eyes and just pointed and picked any of them, so it, it is likely to help you calm yourself. It, it's likely to work in your situation. Uh, another way we can say it is all the tools work because we're retraining to think in a more positive way instead of in a negative way, because we've been thinking that way for a long time. So I, when I lead in, in person, I, I would do like this point, and you can take yourself off mute and put it in and raise your, you can talk or put it in the chat. And if we're doing this in person, one of the things that I, I really like, um, we have these tools card. So basically there are 60 tools all on these cards. And when you're in person, it's nice to be able to just put these on the table. Um, and, and if people aren't sure what could be used, you know, just kind of picking, picking from that pile is really helpful. Um, so anything else that you think would be helpful in, in Terry's situation, Valerie, do we have anything coming through? One of my favorite ones, um, I, you know, you, you just end up with your favorites. That's just how this program is. Uh, you learn a lot of tools, but some just really resonate with you more than others. Um, and the, the very last one on this list, I like a lot. When feeling overwhelmed, do things in part acts or one step at a time. And I, 
work with my kids a lot when they come home, they've got a big project to do, a book report, whatever it is. Um, I always say to them, so how do you eat an elephant? And then they, of course, roll their eyes like, oh God, mom, here we go again. Um, but you do that one step at a time, right? So this is a great tool when feeling overwhelmed, do things in part acts. And I work with them to break down whatever that big kind of daunting task is. So that that is one of my favorites. And we have, Annalina said something great. Uh, she says, I like having the courage to make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, like we, yeah. If it was, if it was a mistake, and when we, when we, you know, because we were especially at teenagers, everything has to be right, you know. And Dr. Lowe says perfection is a hope, a dream, and illusion. We we have to do everything correct, or people judge us wrong, you know. And another good concept in this program is um, realizing that all of these are average situations, and we are average people. Uh, so we're not alone in experiencing some of these. Valerie, anything else from the chat box you wanna share? Okay. Um, does anybody need translating into Spanish? Is that what you're asking me, Valerie? Oh no, um, the, um, Angela already told me we are, that we're gonna share this slide with you and this is being recorded. Yeah, okay. and this session is recorded, so she should be able to get to that. But um, my contact information is you've got the speaker panel there, so please feel free to reach out to Lisa or me uh, or Valerie with, with any questions. All right, so Lisa, I'm going to have you take everyone through the four-step method. Okay, so um, what happens in the meeting is after we have gone through one of a situation like we went through with Max and, Val, and Valerie, you know, what, what happened? I'm sorry, not Valerie, with- um, uh, Carrie. Carrie, yeah, sorry. Uh, what a situation similar to that. So uh, somebody might come into the class and didn't get an A on a test or what have you. So step one describes the event. And we stick to the facts and we remove the emotion. And it's very simple. What could it be? I didn't do well on my math test. Step two, please. What were your thoughts, feelings, and, and emotion? You know, so I studied really hard. That was my, it could be a thought. The teacher maybe didn't, didn't correct the test right. He always, he always does this to us. I feel he's always wrong. And I, I need to talk to him. I maybe some tightness in my chest, blessing. I'll never get into college. Um, and then step three, please. And that's when we use the tools for the spots, the little catchphrases that Dr. Lowe's from Dr. Lowe's writings that we use. What kind of temper did you experience? And what tools did you use to calm yourself down? So those little catchphrases. And we can say little things like, to know is that we don't know how I did on the test. Or, I'm sorry, Lisa, did you have a question? Oh, um, we can lower our standards and our performance will rise. It's one test of many math tests that she has taken. Um, and we can endorse for just taking the test. We endorse for the effort, not the outcome. And then step four, please. What would have happened before the, before your recovery international training or the, or the power of your mind training? What what would have been the outcome? I may have gone home, and you know not been able to continue on with the day, sulked at the dinner table, you know, um, been isolated, maybe not gone to the dance, you know, not done well for the rest of the week for that one test, and so. After the example is given, then everybody is quiet. I mean, the, the example giver is quiet. And then the example giver is quiet. And then the, the other people in the group give her some more tools or spots. And we're retraining the, the disordered thinking into an orderly way. And we use these little catchphrases to put it back into order of sort. So then we could say some more tools such as 
you know, we endorse for the will to effort, not the will to comfort. Uh, we, we uh, knowledge teaches us what to do, but practice tells us how to do it. Um, and we give a few spots or tools until for a few minutes till the person, till the person gets some relief and then the next person does it. And then the next person does it. Next slide, please. So here, here are the four steps written down. So um, does anybody want to try giving an example? It doesn't have to be a child example. It could be an adult example. I'd be more than happy to teach you how our examples work. Oh, come on. Do you want me to call on you? <laughs> Lisa, why don't we get people comfortable first by going through Max and Terry's and then let's offer that up again and let's see. Um, so Max's situation, we read about his story. So step one was pretty um, basic. I was waiting for a friend. She was late. That's when oh, I you want me to read. You want me to read this? Sorry, I think you froze. I've got you frozen on the camera. Can you still hear us, Lisa? Okay, I'm going to keep going. Hopefully Lisa's sound and picture comes back. Um, Max was clenching his jaw. He was thinking angry thoughts. In his third step, he's identifying his temper and the tools he used. I was afraid she blew me off. She didn't care to show up. I was an angry temper that she kept me waiting. But I spotted I should uh, excuse, not accuse. I shouldn't take it personally. Maybe she couldn't help it. And then this important piece of endorsing for realizing that he could control his uh, reaction. And then step four always starts well with before my training. This is what would have happened. And I would have yelled at her. Uh, we would have fought, would have ruined the whole evening. But now I can relax and figure out a plan B. So he's definitely salvaging the night. Um, I think we may have lost Lisa due to technical issues, but no, I'm just going to keep going. So um, so in Terry's story, uh, Cashel, you were, ooh, I keep doing that. Cashel, you were helpful in, in telling us that uh, her situation, she, she was going to meet a friend to a movie. She was late. She started to get worked up. She was stuck in traffic. Um, and we went through what her symptoms were already. We talked about her being, um, well, we talked about her tempers, but what were some of her symptoms? Because actually we haven't identified that. What do you think? And think about your own situation. How many here have been stuck in traffic? late for an important meeting, right? This is average and this happens, this is trivial, it happens all the time. So what are some of those symptoms that you might be experiencing in this situation? And again, put them in the chat or Cashel, you wanna, you unmuted, great. Yeah. When I, I was in traffic on the way here, so this is like very recent. <laughs> and um, I like grip the steering wheel and I kind of, um, say resentful things about the people around me because I'm so frustrated that like no one's going fast enough or like you know they're going under the speed limit or whatever it is and um, I'm just kind of like ah oh, you know like I didn't leave myself enough time or whatever but in this instance um, she I think she was like had like the sweat marks still like the other one and I think that she was like kind of like in a angry face so I feel like she was exhibiting some like emotional distress as well as like physical tension. Good and yeah that that tension around the steering wheel right those fists grabbing the steering wheel. Valerie anything else come through the chat? Okay so the temper sh and tools well yeah. Oh my so it just came in uh so Annalena says getting stressed out blaming others for not driving correctly Good. And that, was, think that, all been there. that was that angry temper, right? Blaming mm -hmm. others. So she spotted her tempers. There were some tools she used to calm herself. Um, and then the outcome, you know, she, before this program, and she didn't say this, so we could just imagine before this program, she would have fought with, with her friend and, and ruined the whole night. But now, you know, they have a plan B and they can go on. So with that, um, again, I'm going to, I'm going to do this endorse this mental pat on your back, this high five, number one for participating today. So everyone should be endorsing for getting up, 
going to the office or wherever you went or getting up and going to your computer uh, to participate in the Live, Live Well San Diego conference and for getting on the sessions. Those are important things to endorse for today. Um, there, so I mentioned this before, there's an independent workbook this, that can be purchased through Amazon or through the Power Your Mind or Recovery International website. Uh, right now it's on sale for $15 and like some change, 96 cents. Um, but if you work with a, a group and you're interested in having this presentation done for people you know, that you work with, your colleagues or other leaders of a youth group, please let me know. I'm happy to do an overview and I can do a more extensive overview. Um, and we do have some money right now because of some funding to do pilot sessions. So I am able to offer 12, 15 of these workbooks if you're interested in doing this kind of layered um, facilitated uh, program with me. And so those workbooks would be free, which is a nice savings. And then there's um, a discount in the, in the seven session facilitated workshop as well. So lots of opportunities to, um, to engage with the program, either independently or with a group. And if you're interested in that, please let me know. Um, this is, if you've got your phone a handy and you'd want to snap that QR code, that'll take you right over to poweryourmind.org. And um, if, if you are part of an organization and you're saying, you know, like uh, we have agreements with uh, mental health systems and community research uh, foundation and, and some other groups that actually just use our program, we can also talk about licensing agreements for that. So there's my contact information, Angela at recoveryinternational.org for anything that you um, have questions about. And we didn't get Lisa. Did we get Lisa back on yet? I don't see her. Valerie, maybe you can send her a text and see what's going on. Um, if that Zoom link is not working for her anymore. And I have a couple of questions here. So Amanda wants to know if she's not in school, does she qualify? Well, of course. Um, Amanda, go ahead and send me an email, Angela at recoveryinternational.org. Tell me your situation. Tell me what you're interested in um, for the program, if it's independent workbooks or if it's, you know, through, through for a group that you're involved in. And let's figure that out for you. Um, and I'll await other questions that come in. In the meantime, I'm just going to show you some other uh, works here by Dr. Lowe, Mental Health Through Will Training. These are really the standard ones used in the adult um, peer-led programs. So we have these, these programs all over the country, um, lots by Zoom, lots by phone. So there's always a meeting that you can find. And they typically do a reading from any of these books. Um, Power Your Mind, of course, uses this comic panel. It's a very short version of that. So lots of other books if you're interested. And contact information is always important. Lisa is uh, right out in San Diego and always um, very, very helpful in, in directing people to uh, whether it's our meetings or a welcome session, welcome meeting, overview of the program or any of that. Um, and unfortunately, I don't know what the technical issue going on is, but Lisa can't seem to get back to us. So that's okay. This is why we have a plan B and do things in part acts. And, <laughs> and we also know that technical issues are the external environment and beyond our control. So uh, I'm sure Lisa is applying some of the tools from this program right now to work herself down from the situation because I know how, how much she wanted to participate today. Valerie, other questions or anything um, coming in? No. Or go ahead and unmute and just ask a question. I think we're about a little like eight or nine minutes left in our program. 
So I'm curious, and maybe you could use the, the raise hand button in your um, Zoom. Uh, I'm just trying to make everyone's face bigger here. Is anyone currently working with a youth group, um, whether it's a school group, a faith-based group, uh, you know, it could be through the YMCA, it could be anything um, that you think this might be an interesting fit and you'd like a little bit more information on? Give me a thumbs up or a hands up or, yeah, Cashel, you, you too? Uh, is my mic on? Okay. Um, yes, I, so I work for Connect Med International and we are a group here in San Diego, a nonprofit organization who serves kids and families, um, kids who have craniofacial or other visible differences in their families. So um, we offer um, psychosocial camps. Um, we have them like now since COVID, we've been able to offer them virtually a lot more frequently than we were able to in the past um, with just in person. And there are, um, we, we have a lot of, we do a lot of work with like um, medical PTSD um, because our kiddos have been going through surgery for like their whole entire lives. And a lot of their surgeries are done even before they can talk and stuff. And so they have a lot of um, workups around going to the doctor. And so I think having like this framework um, could help ease down some anxieties, you know, um, about that and, and just helping in tough situations, I think it would be helpful for the kids and their families to have some of these tools, you know, decide, is it angry temper? Is it fearful temper? Like, how can I best manage it? Um, and yeah, I think it would help, it would help them. So I, that's why I took a million pictures and I would love <laughs> if I could get the um, PDF of, of our presentation today to share it with our executive director, um, Rita Albert, and um, then maybe we can go forward with like, it was just so wonderful um, learning about all this because I think it's totally applicable for the group of kids that we work with. Well, that's great. Thanks. Yeah, just send me an email. I'll, I'll get you those slides. And like okay. I said, offering to at any point, um, jump on a Zoom and yeah. um, yay, Lisa's back. Uh, jump on a Zoom yeah. and do a presentation like this for, for yeah. your colleagues. That would be great. Um, okay. and, and yes, we deal in trivial situations, but the idea is, of course, we're building our resistance to, to resilience to those trivial situations. And at some yeah. point, you know, when and if those bigger things in life happen, you also still have tools that, that mm -hmm. can help work yourself down. Valerie, I see your hand up. Thank you. Uh, so right before when I've asked you, actually, I, I misread Amanda's questions. She didn't say if I'm not in school. She said if we are not a school, and she did share um, what they do. So she, I'm gonna read what she sent in the chat. So Brain Balance San Diego and Chula Vista offers a research-based, personalized, drug-free program designed to improve attention and focus, ADHD behavior, social skills, anxiety, executive functioning, and academic cognitive performance, um, for example, ADHD, autism, learning disorders like dyslexia, um, and some other ones for ages four and up and adults. And she said that they do a lot of SEL as part of their program too. And also uh, after that, when you asked, Jesse said that he works at a library and that a lot of kids come into his branch daily. That's great. So lots of things going on there. Thank you so much. Jesse, I am working with a library in Ohio. They are trying to bring this program. And again, COVID is, you know, can we get in person? Can we do these programs again? Uh, very iffy, but she was very interested in that. So I think it would be a wonderful library program. Amanda, thank you for that. Um, please contact me. Let's let's talk about what we can do. Um, yeah, definitely. A lot of what you talked about in this, I was like, yep, I heard that students <laughs> say that yesterday. Yep, hear that. I pretty much hear these things every day. I mean, that's why they come to us. So. Uh, I'm always collecting resources and just, yeah, if I can train my team better and how do we guide them through um, these steps, right? Really promote that growth mindset and healthy, healthy mental health as well. Yeah, and so um, I've done about five train the trainer sessions. So I also have a leader guide with this program. So I can train you, right, on how to use 
the, the workbook, we've got the leader guide, the workbook, and then I have um, a PowerPoint slide set that goes with it as well. And I'm doing a private um, session right now for a, a faith-based group. The adults want to do and disseminate the program to their, to their kids. Wonderful. So I'm going to take them through the program and I could do the same again, if you've got five, six, eight people, whatever it is, um, I could do those sessions for train the trainer as well. So lots of opportunities. And I hope, um, I hope you connect with me because, you know, it's just, it, it's just life skills. It doesn't matter if the kids in the group have a, a diagnosis of mental health condition or not. And we don't ask, it doesn't matter what anyone has. If they have anxiety, depression, bipolar, it doesn't matter to us um, because we're dealing with trivial events and everyone has buttons that easily can be pushed. And so this is about really coping with those everyday life issues. Okay, Lisa, third time's a charm. <laughs> okay, this is what you call a triviality. I know, I already uh, said that. You were using your tools back there. <laughs> right. You know, I was going to run upstairs to my daughter-in-law and say, help, what's wrong? But to know is that we don't know what was going on. Maybe it's a lot more bandwidth than, than usual, but I don't know. But I'm here to answer any questions. Ah, let me just take a deep breath. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, we're, I'm endorsing. Okay. Yeah, and, and so Lisa, while you're gone, we have a few groups that are interested in um, pursuing this a little bit further with their with their own um, great. groups, which is great. And um, I know I got the five minute warning from our um, from our folks. So again, you know, you've got our information here. Please reach out to either of us. Um, anything related to the youth program, Power Your Mind, that's, that's really me. Anything related to Recovery International or me, uh, peer meetings, reach out to Lisa, but we work together all the time. So either one, you can't go wrong if you contact either of us. Also, I want, I want you to all know one thing that's really important too. Um, a quiet house and a calm house works together. You know, if the parent knows the method, and the child knows the method, it's completely different. And, you know, it makes it for a common, using the tools and the spots. So we have a welcome meeting. Did you talk about that already? I Angela? didn't talk about the welcome meeting and I hope we don't get cut off, but that is something that we can put in the Live Well chat. Okay. And we have a whole page on, on Live Well San Diego conference. So it's got every link you can imagine. Um, but yeah, Lisa runs a, a welcome meeting just to get you familiar with the method too. Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time. I'd love to have you all there. If you have any questions, you can always call the San Diego office um, and we'll be more than happy to help you in any way that we, we can. Um, so let's everybody take a second and endorse for just coming to our meeting in our breakout session today, it's an honor that we get to share what we love that gave us our well-being and being able to be a part of Live Well San Diego. You know, maybe it's a double endorse. Double endorse, especially for you, Lisa, because you got yes. back on and technical yes, issues. Yes, yes, thank yes. you, Valerie, for running the chat and thank yes. you for your contributions today. Sebastian, thank you as well. And I know we are signing off here in a few seconds. <laughs> thank much appreciated, much, everyone. everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, all now. Bye. -bye. I'm just going to stay on just to see if there's anyone else who has a question. I know what happened. It just threw me off. I kept yeah, wondering. you know, I saw your link. Your screen froze, and I thought, oh, that's yours, good. Yours, yours froze first. So then I thought, hello, hello, can you hear me? And then I, I couldn't hear me. And so I thought, uh oh, that just threw me off. So these things happen. It's a triviality, right? Yeah. And you know what? We got through your part, which was good. And then I just picked it up. And well, um, good thing we practiced about it. Right. Yeah. So, about so that, that was right? Fine. That's what happened, right? Valerie, so did I, you have to speak Spanish today? No. no. But I'm still here if anybody <laughs> wants to speak Spanish to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think maybe I need to end. Oh, no. It says leave. I'm surprised it hasn't 
kind of kick this off because we're at that uh, 1030 mark. So mm -hmm. with that, since we have another meeting to get to, um, thank you ladies very much. And thank 11 you. 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, we have a staff meeting, Valerie. Okay, you know that, right? And then yeah. one o'clock. Okay. okay. All right, so, well then, bye, everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you now. Okay, leave. <laughs>